say, mm. so the holidays are coming. And if you're feeling a bit conflicted because you want to enjoy all the feasting, but you don't want to gain weight this year, then help is here. <laughs> um, it is possible to enjoy yourself without any FOMO, fear of missing out, and also feel good in your clothes come January 1st. So listen on to discover my two spookily effective secrets to make this your reality in 2025. So welcome to Joyful Eating, episode 201, and today we're talking about two spookily effective secrets to enjoy the holidays without weight gain. Uh, but before we get to that, the best bite I had is actually yesterday I taught, taught a class with my Joyful Cooking students, and we were I was, we were learning about um, making mayonnaise, my crazily simple stick blender mayonnaise method, which actually someone, one of my students made it, Laura made it on the class live with me. And she was like, oh my goodness, I've never made mayonnaise before. And it was so good. And so she was really blown away by how easy it was. Um, so the best bite I had this week was, so um, after we made the mayonnaise and then we made a miso version of it. So just stirring some white miso paste in with the mayonnaise. And then I served it with, um, some rocket, so arugula from the garden with poached eggs, the mayo, and it was it was so so good. <laughs> uh, and I had that like this nut sprinkle, uh, seed sprinkle on top, which is yeah, was really good. So poached eggs, mayonnaise, like two of my favorite things. Okay, so our plan today is first I want to share the story behind this episode, and then we're going to look at the two effective, um, spookily effective secrets to finding this balance when you're feasting. So you get to feel good in your clothes at the end of the holidays, but you also get to enjoy everything and you're not missing out on anything. And then I've got some bonus tips, the four bonus tips actually, to help you enjoy food more this, this holiday season without missing out on anything. So Basically, the story behind this is, you know, it's that time of year, holidays are coming. And so I always like to, to yeah, think about how, we, you know, what's going to be the most helpful for you to, for you to help you navigate this as, you know, we go through the next you know, few few months of, uh, of, of holidays. And um, yeah, so I thought just what are the, the two, like really, like if it, if I had to narrow it down to two, what were the two things that I would recommend focusing on over this period? Because I know that it's busy. I know that there's a lot going on. But also, I like to do an episode on this just to remind us that, yes, the holidays are there and feasts are a great part of life. And I'm so glad that we have them. But also, it doesn't have to be this all or nothing thing where we're like either, you know, in some sort of restriction mode or we're in this feasting, like, what the hell, just eating everything in sight mode. Like there is, it is possible to find this middle ground where we get to have the enjoyment and we're not missing out on a single thing. And we're also like, you know, our weight isn't going up and we get to feel good in our clothes after the feasting as well. Um, so I love sharing this message and I will never get sick of sharing this message. Uh, so that's, that's the story behind. So what are the two spookily effective secrets? Um, so so the, the, the two things are, first of all, getting into the habit of weighing yourself every day. And then the second one is setting intentions. And so we'll talk about the first one. So weighing ourselves every day. And I recently did a, 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 a whole podcast episode on, on this, but basically the research is really clear so that and there's been countless studies where, where um, researchers have, have looked at people Oh, and they're over the whole, specifically over the holiday period and group, like the group creep of people who don't weigh themselves on average will gain weight over the holidays. Whereas people who weigh themselves every day, are like significantly less likely to gain weight. And it's just like, it's just comes down to that whole human nature thing of what gets measured gets improved. So if we have visibility of a metric and in this case, our weight, then when we um when we have that when we have that awareness around exactly where we're at we just can't help ourselves but make it better so then we naturally like we'll just be we'll moderate our eating so even though we're still enjoying ourselves just having that little check in, check in every day helps keep helps keep us from going you know, into crazy overeating territory all the time which means that by the end of the 
you know, by the end of the holidays, the net gain, the, the net, we net out being without gaining weight, just because we've had that little bit of more awareness around how, you know, how the previous day's gone and it helps us just keep ourselves in check and not in a, it doesn't have to be a torturous, awful experience. It can actually be quite um, empowering to do that. So if you have some reservations around this. I just invite you to see it as an experiment of like, okay, maybe if I've never done this over the holidays, I've never weighed myself before over the holidays, what will I, let's do an experiment of one, like do an experiment with myself and just see, see what happens, right? And just because the worst thing that could happen is it's torturous and you hate it and you can quit the experiment halfway through. But you just just might find that you actually do enjoy it or it's it's actually helpful and that you actually do want to keep going. So, um, so yeah, if you have some reservations, I just do invite you to like try it for a week and just see, see how you feel. And then you can uh, evaluate afterwards. Okay. That, that brings us to the second secret, which is setting intentions. And basically when we, whenever we're eating, like we have different parts of our brain. So we have our, our, um, prefrontal conscious, uh, prefrontal cortex, which is you know more evolved part of our brain that can plan, that can weigh up like future consequences. And it can think about the, the, about the future and how our actions now are going to impact us in the future. And then we also have other parts of our brain and the other part of our brain that we usually use when we're, we're interacting with food is a more primitive part called the amygdala. And that part of our brain isn't able to, it doesn't understand time. So it doesn't understand the future. So it's just all about the present moment and avoiding pain and seeking pleasure in the moment. And so when we, when we normally go about our life, if we just li are living our lives without being very intentional, we tend to default to using our amygdala to make decisions around food which means, you know, should I have some more holiday candy? Yes. Should I have another cookie? Yes. Should I uh, have another glass of wine? Yes. Like, and so you know where that, using your amygdala, you know where that leads because it's like seeking pleasure. So of course it leads to belly aches <laughs> and, and weight gain, which isn't, isn't so great. And so what the alternative is, and the good news is that there is an alternative, is to get into the habit of using your prefrontal cortex. So get into the habit of using your rational brain more often in these interactions with food. And so what that looks like is setting intentions. So before you have any interaction with food, just pausing and asking yourself, like, how do I want this to go? And just that one like little shift of, of just putting a pause in, checking in with yourself of how do I want this to go, thinking about the future, which your amygdala can't, so your only your prefrontal cortex can think about the future. By doing that, it just gives you that opportunity to make a better choice. So it gives you that opportunity to decide, make a choice around food that's, yeah, it's going to feel okay in the moment, it's going to feel good in the moment, and it's also going to feel good later on. So so we want to just get into the habit of setting intentions. And so before any interaction with food, so I like to think about it when I walk into the kitchen, when I open the fridge door, that's one of my triggers to like, to prep food, like prep, grab a snack, to prep a snack or to, um, to get, you know, start cooking a meal. I, when I open the, after I open the fridge, I just pause and ask myself, like, how do I want this to go? And and just check in with how, like, do I want to be just snacking and randomly picking the whole time I'm cooking and sit down to dinner and feel gross? Quite possibly not. <laughs> uh, and so that just by having that little check-in, I'm able to like make that choice and then adjust my behavior accordingly so that I am able to, and I might decide, oh, actually, no, I am pretty peckish. Maybe I'm just going to pause now and have a little snack before I start prepping. So then I won't overdo it on the, on the picking when I'm prepping. And then when I sit down to dinner, I'll still have you know, a good amount of space for, for, for dinner and I won't be feeling stuffed when I, when I sit down for dinner. Or another time for setting a good time for setting intentions is like when you sit down with your meal. So whether that's at a table or wherever, but just when you, when I see that plate of food in front of me, that's another trigger for me to pause, check in. Okay. How do I want this to go? And, and uh, so that's, and then the third time, so that, that applies wherever you are. So if you're out, you can do that. If you're at home, you can do that. Uh, and then another trigger I, can, I find helpful is if I am going out, like just before on the way to the venue, so I'm heading, like getting, going to the, the restaurant or the bar or whatever, as, a, as a, my trigger is like, as I walk through the door, um, it's just to then 
pause and check in with how do I want this to go? And particularly, it's particularly helpful with food, but it's also very important to do that when, when I'm drinking as well. And so I do it for, I do it for both. And those two secrets, if you employ either one of them, but preferably both, that's going to radically change your experience of, um, of the holiday season. And I guarantee that you'll be feeling different in your body on January 1st if you don't do these two things. So weighing yourself, setting intentions, weighing yourself, setting intentions. Again, it, ta- it doesn't take very much effort. It doesn't take a lot of time, but it has a huge impact on the results on, on, on where you get to. And the cool thing is like when you're being intentional, you get to give yourself that permission that sometimes you do want to just have a really big feast and like overdo it a bit. And that's okay. Cause if you're doing it from time to time, not a problem. It's when you're doing it day after day, after day, after day for weeks and weeks that it does become a problem. Um, so that's the two core secrets, but I won't, won't leave you with, with that. We've got some bonus tips for you. So Um, bonus tip number one is to like enjoy the anticipation. So actually give yourself permission to look forward to things. And actually, you know, this time can be, can be great. If you really want to take dial this in, like actually think about the holidays, like what are your favorite treats that come over the holidays? Are you a mince pie fan? Is there a particular cookie that you really love? Is there, you know, do you love your eggnog or is there a drink that you have over the holidays that you wouldn't, that you don't normally have at other times of year? And actually like get a list of what are the things I'm excited about? What are the things I'm looking forward to? And let yourself enjoy that anticipation because we don't actually have to be consuming food to enjoy thinking about it. Like we can actually get a lot of pleasure from thinking about food. So that's my first bonus tip. That, and that just double, like in, increases your enjoyment without a single calorie needing to cross your lips. So I think that is so fun. Tip number two is to slow down. So whenever you are eating, just if you notice yourself rushing, just remind yourself there's no rush and just taking your time and savoring. Uh, it goes a long way to getting more enjoyment. And of course, the slower you eat, the like more like like the less likely you are to overeat because your your satiety is going to your stomach is going to catch up with you. Uh, so yeah, slowing down. But it also when we slow down, we get more enjoyment because we're paying more attention as well. So so eating slowly so helpful. Um, tip number three is choosing an abundance mindset. And so one of the things that happens in the holidays, specifically this time of year, is in the back of our mind we're like okay, well, I'm going to be starting New Year's starting in January. So I'm going to be on the straight and narrow then. And, um, and so when we, we've got that, like the future is going to be restricted, like I'm going to be on this diet in, in January. So therefore it means I better enjoy what I can now. And so we're living in food scarcity because we've got this future of, oh, there's going to be this future of restriction. So I've got to like resources, food scarce. I've got to like get as much as I can in now. So what we want to do is instead of having that looming like January 1st diet starts, you know, root scarcity uh, block in front of our, in, in, the, in the hanging it over our heads, actually deciding, no, this year I'm going to do something different and I'm actually not going to restrict in January. No matter what happens, promise yourself that come January 1st, you're not going to go on some crazy restrictive diet. And that you're actually going to have delicious food in January, January 1st, January 2nd, there's always going to be a delicious food in your future. And by opening yourself up to choosing like an abundance mindset around food and letting go of that whole restriction mentality, that is going to help you navigate the holidays because you're not going to have that, that, that pressure of like, oh, I'm going to have to be good next time. So next, next month. So I better like, you know, go crazy now when you, when you know, okay, there's going to be plenty of amazing food in my future. So yeah, I'm having this like Thanksgiving, whatever, pumpkin pie, but there's going to be more amazing food for me like next week, the week after. So there's no need to eat all the pie now. And this is, this is another huge mindset one, like choosing food, food abundance is like, so it's first of all, not much nicer way to live, but it really makes a difference to our ability to then not overeat in the moment because it's like, well, there's no need to overeat if you know that you're going to get in amazing food later. And then the fourth, my fourth bonus tip for you is don't expect to do it perfectly. Don't expect perfection. So you know, there are times where we overeat, we overdo it, and it's actually good that we do that. Like, I think that's part of our, um, 
hum, humanness is to have these times of celebration, have these times of feasting. Like we're kind of designed, we, what's how we evolved to have feasts and famines. Um, so what we want to do is like, it's okay. Like let give whatever happens. It doesn't have to be perfect. There's, there will be times where you overeat. There's still times where I overeat. There's still times where I think, Oh, why did I do that? And that's okay. Like that's all part of, well, it's all part of the, the holidays. It's all part of the joy. And it's like, there's no need to beat ourselves up about it. So we can like give ourselves that permission of, yep, sometimes I'm going to not do it perfectly and that's okay. So that takes a lot of pressure off as well. Uh, so there we go. That's, that's, that's the strategy. Like that, here are some really great options, particularly those two secrets of weighing yourself every day, setting intentions. You're going to have a radically more enjoyable and healthier holiday doing those two things. So I hope wherever you're celebrating, whoever you're celebrating with, that you have a fantastic time. And um, yeah, I look forward to catching you next week. Okay. Bye.